Are magic mushrooms more effective at treating depression than antidepressants? Well, in April 2021, the New England Journal of Medicine published a study that did a head-to-head -head comparison of psilocybin versus escitalopram, which is Lexapro, for the treatment of depression. This was a randomized, double-blind study that included 59 people, and in order to be in this study, participants needed to have at least moderate to severe major depressive disorder. And prior to starting the study, they needed to discontinue all of their psychiatric medications in addition to stopping all psychotherapy. Now let's talk about the study design and what treatments the participants received. So this study took place over a six week period, okay? And patients were divided into two different treatment groups. And I really want you to understand the treatments that each group received because it's pretty interesting. The patients in the psilocybin group received 25 milligrams of psilocybin on two different occasions, okay? The first was on day one, and then the second was on day 21. The researchers also gave those in the Lexapro group psilocybin during these days, but only a microdose of one milligram. And this was presumed to have negligible activity, but by doing this, all patients could be informed that they were receiving psilocybin. Now, both groups were also instructed to take one capsule every morning throughout the trial. And these capsules were either placebo or the Lexapro. Remember, SSRIs like Lexapro are often used first line in treating depression. And so the psilocybin group obviously received the placebo treatment, right? And the Lexapro group got the actual medication. The initial dose was 10 milligrams, which is a typical starter dose that we use in practice for this medication. And this dose was later increased to 20 milligrams daily. And then all patients also received psychological support over the six week period. Okay, so how are symptoms tracked? All patients prior to starting treatment filled out the quick inventory of depressive symptomatology self-report. And this is a 16 item evaluation with scores ranging from zero to 27. So the higher the score, the worse the depression, right? Makes sense? Participants then filled this out again after the six weeks of treatment. And the primary outcome that researchers looked at was the change in the scores from baseline to the end of treatment, right? They wanted to know whether or not depressive symptoms were improving over time with the treatment. And so what did these results show? The psilocybin group had a score change of minus eight points, while the Lexapro group had a change of minus six points. So yes, the psilocybin group was greater, but this was not significantly different, right? Significance is usually defined by a p-value of less than 0.05, and this p-value was 0.17. Now, there were some secondary items that were also measured, and many of these favored the psilocybin group. So for example, they looked at the percentage of patients who responded in each group, and remember that response means at least 50% improvement in depressive symptoms. So in this study, 70% of the patients in the psilocybin group and 48% of patients in the Lexapro group had a response to treatment. Again, not a significant difference, but interesting nonetheless. The other thing that I want you to know about is that there were no serious adverse events observed in either of the treatment groups. And the most common problem that patients reported in the psilocybin group was headaches. And this usually occurred within 24 hours of receiving the treatment dose. Not only that, the percentage of patients who had anxiety, dry mouth, and sexual dysfunction was actually higher in the Lexapro group. And then what I find really interesting is that those in the psilocybin group reported greater perceived improvements in the ability to cry, and they were better able to feel compassion, intense emotion, and pleasure. So they didn't experience the emotional blunting that many people who take SSRIs complain about. Now, what are my thoughts about all of this? Well, there are a couple things that I like about this study and a couple of things that actually bother me about it. Let's first start out with the good stuff. The first thing is that while psilocybin wasn't necessarily significantly different than Lexapro, I find it very interesting that patients had as good of, if not better of a response to the psilocybin compared to the Lexapro, especially when patients are seeing these effects after only one to two treatment sessions. We know that antidepressants need to be taken every day in over several weeks to fully build up in your system. So having a potential treatment option that is quickly effective and doesn't require a lot of work on the patient side of things when it comes to remembering to take a medication every day is very, very appealing. The second thing that stands out to me is that patients in the psilocybin group generally tolerated the treatment better. So many patients on SSRIs struggle with emotional blunting or sexual side effects. So it's nice to see a treatment option that doesn't have this associated with it. 
patients are less likely to stop treatment if they're tolerating it well and seeing positive results. Now, here are a couple things about the study that I find bothersome. The first issue that really stands out is that there was no placebo group in this trial. So yes, both groups had improvement in depressive symptoms, but we actually have no clue if the responses seen were actually meaningful. And the authors even note, quote, the absence of a placebo group in the trial limits conclusions about the effect of either agent alone. This, in my mind, could have been easily accounted for. The second thing is that this study was only six weeks long, right? We know that antidepressants need time to build up in your system before seeing true benefit. And study after study suggests that they need a full six to eight weeks. So I'm curious whether or not we would have seen a better response to the Lexapro if the study lasted a few weeks longer. So is psilocybin the next go-to treatment for depression? My verdict is maybe, it very well could be. However, right, I think we need to see some studies with larger treatment groups that are conducted for longer periods of time before we start using this as a standard treatment option in medicine. Hopefully these studies will be published soon because this is an area of psychiatry that really excites me. Now click that top video if you wanna learn more on the use of psychedelics in psychiatry.